On Sunday, Senator Bernie Sanders took to Twitter to deliver one of his usual messages. People go to the doctor because they're sick, get a diagnosis from their doctor, but they can't afford the treatment, he wrote. How crazy is that? So I responded snarkily, I go to a fancy store to check out a piece of furniture and I can't afford it. Totally crazy. This, of course, prompted spasms of apoplexy on the left. How could I dare to compare medical care to furniture? Was I equating the two? Was I suggesting that the necessity of furniture was somehow comparable to the necessity of medical care? Of course not, because that would be stupid. I was pointing out that medical care is a commodity, and that in life, we are often faced with commodities we cannot afford. But this mere observation caused a ruckus on the left. Necessities don't compare to luxuries, said one angry tweeter. Bless characters like Ben Shapiro for demonstrating the complete soullessness of capitalist ideology, tweeted another. The idea here seems to be that unless you declare medical care a right rather than a commodity, you're soulless. That as Marx might put it, necessity rather than autonomy creates rights. This is foolish, both morally and practically. Morally, you have no right to demand medical care of me. I may recognize your necessity, I may offer charity. My friends and I may choose to band together and fund your medical care, but your necessity does not change the basic math. Medical care is a service and a good provided by a third party. No matter how much I need bread, I do not have a right to steal your wallet or hold up the local bakery to obtain it. Theft may end up being the least immoral choice under the circumstances that doesn't make it a moral choice or suggest that I have not violated your rights in pursuing my own needs. But the left thinks that declaring necessity's rights somehow overcomes the individual rights of others. If you're sick, you now have the right to demand that my wife, who is a doctor, care for you. Is there any limit to this right? Do you have the right to demand that the medical system provide life-saving care forever to the tunes of millions of dollars of other people's taxpayer dollars or services? How exactly can there be such a right without the government rationing care or using compulsion to force individuals to provide it or confiscating mass sums of wealth to pay for it? The answer, nope, doesn't work that way. Rights that derive from individual need inevitably violate individual autonomy. In response to my tweet, my colleague New York Magazine's Jesse Single wrote, quote, free markets are good at some things and terrible at others, and it's silly to view them as ends rather than means. That's not true. Free markets are expressions of individual autonomy, and therefore they are ends to be pursued in and of themselves. Now, practically, declaring medical care a right doesn't make it actually happen. Just as Ruth Bader Ginsburg said at one point, she would model new constitutions on the South African Constitution, which guarantees, quote, everyone has the right to have access to health care services, including reproductive health care. The state must take reasonable legislative and other measures within its available resources to achieve the progressive realization of each of these rights. That's what the South African Constitution says. But the World Health Organization ranks South Africa somewhere near the bottom of the globe in terms of medical care. What happened? Why didn't the right self-actualize? Because medical care is a commodity, and if you treat it differently, that's stupid. To make a commodity cheaper and better, you need two things, profit incentive and freedom of labor. The government destroys both of these things in the healthcare industry. It decides medical reimbursement rates for millions of Americans, particularly poor Americans. This, in turn, creates an incentive for doctors not to take government-sponsored health insurance. It regulates how doctors treat with patients, the sorts of training doctors must undergo, the sorts of insurance they must maintain. All of this convinces fewer Americans to become doctors. Under supply of doctors generally, and of doctors who will accept your insurance specifically, along with over-demand stimulated by government-driven health insurance coverage, that leads to mass shortages. The result, an over-reliance on emergency care, costs for which are distributed among government, hospitals, and insurance payers. So, what's the solution for poor people? Well, not to declare medical care a right. Certainly not to dismiss reliance on the market as some sort of perverse cruelty. Markets are the solution in medical care, just as they are in virtually every other area. If you treat medical care as a commodity, that means temporary shortages, and it means some people won't get everything we wish they would have. But that's also true, but worse, with government-sponsored medical care, as the most honest advocates will admit. And whereas government-sponsored medical care requires a top-down approach that violates individual liberties, generates over-demand, and quashes supply, markets prize individual liberties. They reduce demand. You don't demand more of what you have to pay for. And they heighten supply through profit incentive. So, back to the furniture now. Let's say your life depended on this choice today. You either have to obtain an affordable chair or an affordable x-ray. Which would you choose to obtain? Well, if you're not stupid, you choose the chair. That's because there are lots of types of chairs produced by scores of different companies, widely distributed. You could buy a $15 folding chair or $1,000 antique without the slightest difficulty. By contrast, to obtain an x-ray, you'd have to work with your insurance company, wait for an appointment, and then haggle over price. Why? Because the medical market is way more regulated, thanks to the widespread perception that healthcare is a right, than the chair market. Does that sound soulless? 
True soullessness is depriving people of the choices they require because you're more interested in patting yourself on the back by inventing rights than by incentivizing the creation of goods and services. In healthcare, we could use a lot less virtue signaling and a lot less government. Or we could just read Bernie Sanders' tweets while we wait in line for a government-sponsored surgery, dying, presumably, in a decrepit chair. I'm Ben Shapiro. This is The Ben Shapiro Show. All righty, so there's a lot to get to today. For some reason, there are certain songs playing in my head like Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head and um, Shower the People You Love with Love. But we will get to all of that. The media have lost their minds, by the way. They've completely lost their minds. Trump did a press conference today. And uh, basically, I can give you the short version of what that press conference looked like. Here's this short version right there. Yeah, that's, that was Trump versus the media. <laughs> Um, and uh, and then we have uh, actually a, a quick live shot of CNN headquarters right now. Yeah, there's there's that. So we'll get to all of that in just a second. First, we have to thank our sponsor, Helix Sleep. Helix Sleep, they make fantastic, fantastic mattresses. So uh, I, as I've said before on the program, I am a very light sleeper, so I require a very comfortable bed. And Helix Sleep makes that happen for me. You go on the, onto their website, which is at helixsleep.com. And you fill out a questionnaire and ask kind of your body type, how you prefer to sleep, which do you prefer to sleep on your side, your back, what's your weight, how's your body weight distributed, do you like it a soft or firm mattress, and then they send a mattress to your house, it can, they can even make mattresses that are customized for each side of the bed, if there are two people, and, uh, and that means that they send it to you in the mail, you unwrap it, it inflates because it's a, it's a foam mattress, and then you, you put it down, you sleep on it, and you try it for 100 nights, and if you don't like it, then they'll take it right back. They will take it right back, uh, and um, they will, uh, for, a, for a full refund, if you don't love it, 100% refund guarantee. It's great. You should totally try it. It's uh, Mattresses, solid mattresses are really expensive. Helix Sleep is cheaper. It's also better. We actually took a, a, a more expensive mattress, and we put it in the other room because we liked the Helix Sleep mattress better. If you want it, go to helixsleep.com slash Ben, helixsleep.com slash Ben. If you buy a customized mattress, it can cost thousands of dollars. I know this does not. It can cost well under $1,000 over at Helix Sleep. Com. And if you use the slash Ben, number one, you're showing that we sent you. But number two, you get $50 off your order. Helix Sleep, fantastic sponsor. Check them out, helixsleep.com slash Ben. Okay, wow. So, so many things happened since we last spoke. So many things, and they are all hilarious. So no one said the end of the world wasn't going to be an absolute circus of joy. And that's exactly what it has been. It has been a circus of absolute joy and wonder. So all of this starts last night when CNN begins a news tsunami by running a story about how U.S. intelligence officials have briefed President-elect Donald Trump and President Obama about these rumors, these intelligence reports that suggest that Trump has been working with the Russians and that the Russians have all what they call kompromat, which means they have, uh, I guess, uh, they have some compromising information on Trump and that they're going to blackmail Trump, essentially. Here's what CNN reported, quote, the allegations were presented in a two-page synopsis that was appended to a report on Russian interference in the 2016 election. The allegations came in part from memos compiled by a former British intelligence operative whose past work U.S. intelligence officials consider credible. The FBI is investigating the credibility and accuracy of these allegations, which are based primarily on information from Russian sources, but has not confirmed many essential details in the memos about Trump. The classified briefings last week were presented by four of the senior most U.S. intelligence chiefs. That would be DNI Clapper, FBI Director Comey, CIA Director Brennan, and NSA Director Mike Rogers. So... Basically, they present these supposedly classified documents to Obama and Trump, including allegations that Russian operatives claim to have compromising personal and financial information about Trump. And that's the extent of the story. And so the entire world goes nuts. This is nuts, right? I mean, Trump is being briefed on the fact that the Russians now have all this dirty info, and maybe this explains why Trump is so warm toward Russia all the time. Now, to skip forward in the story for a second, CBS News appears to now be blowing this out of the water. They now say that this never happened. According to CBS News, a senior U.S. intelligence official with knowledge of the preparation for the meeting with Trump said that Trump was not briefed on the two-page addendum to the dossier. And uh, multiple officials say the summary was included in the material prepared for the briefers, but the briefing was oral. No documents were handed to Trump. So that means that even the CNN story wasn't true if the CBS News report is true. But... This CNN story breaks, and the entire world is lit aflame. The entire world goes on fire. It just, it just blows up. And then, and then the world ends, right? So it's already blowing up, and then the pieces implode themselves and create a black hole of news. That's because 
of Ben Smith and BuzzFeed. So, BuzzFeed releases the actual memos that were supposedly compiled for this, for this briefing for Trump and Obama. And these memos are insane. They're insane. I mean, they say things like Trump's lawyer, Michael Cohen, was in the Czech Republic meeting in Prague with Russian agents to get information on Hillary Clinton. They say things like Trump is deep in bed with Russian business sources and that they've paid him lots of money. It says that Putin has been cultivating Trump as an asset for years. And of course, the most the most trafficked allegation and the reason I'm making pee-pee jokes today, I'm not, I'm not enough of a man not to make a good urine joke. I'm sorry. I can't. If, if you're if you wanted if you wanted pee pee jokes, you're in luck today because today is your day. But the, one of the allegations is, and it's too it's too salacious not to mention. The allegation is that, that Trump went to Russia and stayed at the Ritz in Moscow, and um, and stayed in. <laughs> sorry, it's so ridiculous. Stayed in Barack Obama's suite, the one that he used to stay in with Michelle Obama, and then. Uh, proceeded because he hates the Obamas to hire a bunch of Russian whores to to come in and have a golden shower party to pee on the bed in front of him because that's how much he hates the Obamas. And th- so this this thing is flying around the web. Golden shower is is trending, and uh, and Ben Smith releases this statement trying to explain why it is that he even put this thing out. Because he himself says in the report, they say that this stuff is unverified. We don't know how to check it. There's no way to check it. We're going to put it out anyway. Screw it. We're putting it out anyway. (laughs) By the way, it had already been run by a bunch of other people, including David Korn, David Korn of Mother Jones. He didn't put up the full report. Here's what he tweeted about it. This is, uh, he said, I accurately characterized the memos. This is important stuff, but did not publish details. Even Donald Trump deserves journalistic fairness, but not from BuzzFeed. So Ben Smith writes, as you have probably seen, this evening we published a secret dossier making explosive and unverified allegations about Trump and Russia. I wanted to briefly explain to you how we made the decision to publish it. We published the dossier, which Ken Bensinger obtained through his characteristically ferocious reporting. It's not ferocious reporting to just release a document. So that, as we wrote, Americans can make up their own minds about allegations about the president-elect that have circulated at the highest levels of the U.S. government. So we're just going to release this information. We're not going to provide you any way to verify it, but you do it. You do the verification. Like, I don't know how I'm supposed to do the verification or you're supposed to do the verification. That's sort of BuzzFeed's job. It's why all of these other news outlets ripped into BuzzFeed and said, what the hell are you doing? But BuzzFeed releases it anyway, this this report that is chock full of total crazy towns. I mean, total crazy towns. Now, it's possible that the CNN report is quasi, it's, it's somewhat more legitimate than the BuzzFeed report. The BuzzFeed report is just, here's a document we obtained, boom, put it online, and we're not going to tell you whether it's true or false. Also, Russian whores peed on Trump. Right? That was basically the BuzzFeed report. The, the CNN report said, okay, we have sources that say the intel community reported this to Trump. That raises questions about how CNN knew that. Is the intel community leaking? I mean, this entire campaign has been about leaks, so I guess eventually we're going to arrive at this point where it's leaks about leaks. But, you know, that said, uh, the, the, there's, there's Mark Ambinder at the, Mark Ambinder at, at the Atlantic. He said that the, uh, the intelligence community didn't just summarize the dossier. It also included other information. In any case, BuzzFeed runs this, and the world goes insane. And very quickly, Trump is able to debunk some of this stuff. Very quickly, Trump is it, but we'll get to Trump's response in just a second. So first, before we get to that, 4chan, which is sort of the the trolling, the the trolling website for the all, all of the best trolls are on 4chan. It, it's it's troll central. It's where all the cave trolls hang out. And 4chan releases a statement, uh, basically, or people from 4chan saying that they have actually created this stuff from whole cloth, and they sent it to an anti-Trump operative named Rick Wilson, a Republican named Rick Wilson, and Wilson gave it to the intel community, so they trolled the entire intelligence community. There's no evidence that this is true. Other than a couple of people on 4chan saying some stuff, there really is no evidence that this is true. Uh, Wilson himself denies this. Uh, He says that all this information has been out since August. That's the same thing that was being reported by CNN. Uh, So there's no reason to think that what 4chan said is true. There's also no reason to think that what BuzzFeed put out there is true. So we have a bunch of unverified information floating around and people taking sides. And then Russia jumps in. So the Kremlin gives a response. And the Kremlin tells CNN, quote, The Kremlin has no compromat on President-elect Donald Trump, according to Putin's spokesman, Dmitry Peskov. Compromat is the Russian term for compromising information intended to be used against someone. And uh, Peskov said, the Kremlin does not have compromat on Trump. Information does not correspond to reality. It's complete fiction. And then then he also said that we don't even do this. 
Right? They, they, they actually said that there is, uh, they actually said that they don't even spy on people. They don't even do compromat. Compromat isn't even something that we do, which is, uh, no. That is, if you think the Russians don't gather information on people, that'd be crazy. So, now we finally get to the, now we finally get to the, the Donald Trump team response. And Trump has been handed the ultimate gift, just this massive gift by BuzzFeed, because Imagine it had just been the CNN report that said that there are reports that he had heard about all of this and that the intelligence community was checking it out, and that's all we knew. Well, then he'd have some questions to answer, wouldn't he? But that's not all that happened, right? Instead, you get this, this BuzzFeed report that very quickly people start going through and debunking. So, for example, Michael Cohen, who is the lawyer for Trump and is mentioned in this, in this compilation of supposed intelligence on Trump, he immediately tweets out and he says, um, no, I've never been to Prague. And then that's confirmed that he's never been to Prague. USC says that he was actually at USC on the date that he was supposed to have been in Prague. CNN comes out and says, oh, it was a different Michael Cohn. A different Michael Cohn. Not one who worked for Trump, just some guy named Michael Cohn. Okay, well, that's weird. All right. Um, and then the, and the, and the Trump team comes out and they say, this is, this is just pure garbage. Reince Priebus, White House Chief of Staff, he says, this is just nonsense. This is made up. So um, what is uh, the president-elect's response to the BuzzFeed and CNN reports? And will he talk about them at 11 o'clock today in his press conference? Well, I mean, the, the, the BuzzFeed memo is total, complete garbage is what it is. And I, look, BuzzFeed themselves said it was garbage. The New York Times wouldn't even print the document because it was unverifiable. This is what this is. There's tens of thousands of retired agents all over the world. You've got some agent somewhere, maybe in the UK, that hangs a shingle and says, pay me a rate. I'm going to do opposition research. He does a memo or she does a memo. This thing circulates for months. It's unsubstantiated. And voila, it shows up. I, inter I talked to Michael Cohen. One of the basis of this entire report is that a guy named Michael Cohen, who works for the Trump Organization, went to Prague and had a meeting with Russian agents. He'd never been to Prague in his life. I don't know what it says about the report. In fact, the coach of USC baseball in Southern California said, wait a second, he wasn't in Prague. He was with me in Southern California with his son. Well, the I guy's mean, never there, been there to Prague. Parks. There are Prague. parts of Southern California, Prague, California. that look Prague-like. <laughs> right. No, or right. not. But, so wait, he denies all of it, and obviously, you know, he's doing that on good sourcing. This is the beauty of what BuzzFeed did actually in favor of Trump, right? By releasing all this information, half of which is, I mean, a lot of which, for all we know, all of it's garbage. But some of it certainly is garbage. By doing that, they allow Trump the ability to come out and say, everything that we've ever heard about Russia is untrue. There's nothing going on with Russia. All of this is crap, and the media is out to get me. Because guess what? The media was out to get him here, right? They, they actually were out to get him. Seth Meyers had on Kellyanne Conway last night, and he asks her about the, the Russian reports, and uh, Kellyanne Conway slaps him around a little bit. Meyers has her on. He's grilling her. But what she's actually saying is true, because NBC News came out and said that it was not atten uh, addended to the document, and it wasn't mentioned during the oral briefing. So she's actually telling the truth here, and... Seth Meyers is just refusing to believe her. And this is what's happened in our politics, is that if there's a bad story about Trump, everybody who doesn't like Trump immediately leaps to believe it. If there's a good story about Trump, everybody who likes Trump immediately leaps to believe it. The truth has no bearing anymore. It's just pure partisan hackery on all sides. Well, we have to say hello to one of our new advertisers, and thank you to one of our new advertisers, Blue Apron. So, if you like fresh food, if you are sick of packaged food, if you, you know, some of us don't have time to, to, actually go out to a restaurant or some of us actually like the taste of fresh food better food that's just prepared for you know that you can prepare yourself but you don't want to spend all the time going out there picking all the ingredients making all the recipes that's what blue apron is for my wife actually said to me several years ago wouldn't it be great if there was some sort of service where you could order what's in the meal and they just send you the ingredients and you cook it yourself so it's fresh and it tastes better, fresh, high-quality stuff? That's what Blue Apron is. So for less than $10 per meal, Blue Apron delivers seasonal recipes along with pre-portioned ingredients to make these sorts of delicious home-cooked meals. It is guaranteed. They, they, deliver, they guarantee that all of, the, all of the ingredients will be delivered ready to cook and they will be delicious. And uh, it, is, it is easy. They all come with step-by-step -step recipes and everything can be prepared in 40 minutes or less, which if you've ever cooked for a, for a solid meal that is not a lot of time 
at all. You can also customize the kinds of meals that you want based on your preference. You can check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free with free shipping if you go to blueapron.com slash Shapiro, blueapron.com slash Shapiro. I've had a lot of family and friends who've eaten the product of Blue Apron. They say that it is just fantastic, first rate, better than going to a restaurant and certainly better than getting some sort of packaged meal you toss in the microwave. And you don't have to spend time at the market trying to pick out the ingredients because Blue Apron does all of it for you and they give you the best recipes. It's a better way to cook. Blueapron.com slash Shapiro to get those first three meals free. And it is a fantastic service. Blueapron.com slash Shapiro. Use slash Shapiro so they know that we sent you. And they have all sorts of, by the way, um, different meals uh, that are that are apparently really, really good. I mean, it's like chipotle pepper enchiladas with, with sour cream and such. I mean, it's, it's really high quality stuff. Okay, so we're going to say one more thing and then we will have to break here. So Trump himself responds. And, uh, and the way that he responds uh, is less, he, he has a clear win here. Let me just say, Trump has a clear win, right? The BuzzFeed report comes out, it's a bunch of crap, and Trump has a very clear win. And the clear win should be him coming out and saying, all of this is crazy. Are you guys crazy? Like, what, what in the world? What in the world? And then Trump does what Trump does, which is he makes some boo-boos. And this is going to be one of the more epic episodes of Good Trump, Bad Trump that we've ever done here on the Ben Shapiro Show. It's pretty, it's pretty epic. So why don't we play the song real fast? Good Trump, Bad Trump. Which one will we get today? There was some certainly epic good Trump here, and there was some you know, relatively epic bad Trump. So Trump immediately comes out tweeting about the BuzzFeed story, and here is what he tweets. He tweets, Russia just said the unverified report paid for by political opponents is, quote, a complete and total fabrication, utter nonsense, all caps, very unfair, exclamation point. Okay, so... Tip to the wise, if you are trying to tell people that you do not have associations with Russia, nor do you trust them, nor are you in their pocket, it's probably not a wise move to quote them denying the report. Okay, there are lots of reasons to deny the report. You should know whether the report is true since you are the subject of the report. Quoting the Russian intelligence community that just said that they don't spy on people, that's not your best tack. But he continues along these lines. Russia has never tried to use leverage over me. I have nothing to do with Russia, all caps. No deals, no loans, no nothing. Which may or may not be true. He's not releasing his tax returns, as we'll get to in a minute, so we don't really know that, but we, let's assume it's true for a second. And then he tweets, and this one's correct, I win an election easily, uh, well, not easily, a great movement is verified, and crooked opponents try to belittle our victory with fake news, a sorry state. Fair. And then finally he finishes, intelligence agencies should never have allowed this fake news to quote-unquote leak into the public. I don't know if he's trying to make a pee pun or if he just doesn't know how scare marks, uh, scare quotes work. He says, one last shot at me. Are we living in Nazi Germany? <laughs> no, President Trump, we are not living in Nazi Germany. President Trump, who is the president of the United States because you were elected in a presidential election as the president. Also, typical tactics of the Nazis did not include leaking damaging but false information to the press. Typical tactics of the Nazis included murdering your political opponents, imprisoning millions of people, and then systematically killing them. Also invading foreign countries for no reason other than you needed some more room for Germans. So, no, it's not Nazi Germany. And again, there's, there's just it's some typical good Trump, bad Trump. We have to break here. And if you want to watch the rest, and there's so much more to come, you need to stop by. You need to go to dailywire.com right now and become a subscriber because the visuals on this are amazing. You're going to want to, watch, you're going to, want to see the tape. Uh, it's it's dailywire.com, $8 a month gets you a subscription. If you get an annual subscription, I believe that we're in the waning days of the, you get a free copy of my novel, True Allegiance, uh, and signed by me. If you become an annual subscriber, we have a bunch of new things that are about to come out for subscribers. So you want to go and get an annual subscription right now at dailywire.com. We are the largest conservative podcast in the United States.